What's up guys, it's Chris Majestic, and for the past two months, I've been testing a bunch of high-end Wi-Fi 6 gaming routers. Well, today I'm gonna go over my test results and tell you which ones are the best. So you guys might remember last year, I did a couple of videos about Micro Center, which is hands down my favorite tech store. Well, Micro Center was nice enough to sponsor today's video and provide the Wi-Fi 6 gaming routers that I'll be talking about today. If you've never been to Micro Center and you love technology, you definitely need to find your closest store and give them a visit. And for a limited time, Micro Center is offering you a coupon for a free pair of Bluetooth headphones. So make sure you check the links in the video description and take a trip to your local store so you can take advantage of that offer. So the gaming routers that Micro Center provided to us includes the Asus ROG Rapture AX11000, Netgear Nighthawk RAX200, TP-Link Archer AX11000, Amplify Alien, and Linksys MR9600. Now it is important to note that all these routers are Wi-Fi 6, not the new Wi-Fi 6E standard that we'll likely be seeing later this year, but as of right now, these are the top of the line gaming routers that each of these brands has to offer. So before I jump into the results, I wanna talk a little bit about the benefits of a gaming router over some of the popular mesh routers and some of the other routers you'll see out there. So historically, gaming routers have always had the top of the line wireless features, standards, and hardware, providing the fastest speeds with the strongest signal. So the new mesh wireless routers share a lot of this same hardware, but gaming routers still have a lot of high-end features that are more beneficial to gamers or tech-savvy consumers. So in this video, I'll not only be measuring speed, but I'll also measure the latency from these routers, which I'll compare at the end of the video. So my testing procedures for these routers was very similar to the testing I did in my previous videos. I placed each router in my kitchen, which is right in the middle of the house, which is about 3,400 square feet. And instead of relying on external sites, I used my own speed test server. I ran six or more speed tests on each router from five different locations around the house, which includes a couple of trouble spots where I often struggle to get a good signal, like down in my basement or out in my driveway. For general Wi-Fi 6 testing, I use my Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. For 160 megahertz Wi-Fi 6, I used an Asus Wi-Fi 6 desktop NIC. And for Wi-Fi 5, I used a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. So now that you understand the purpose of this video, you should know that none of these brands paid me for this video and all of the thoughts and comments in this video are my own. All right, first up is our most expensive router priced around $560, which is the Netgear Nighthawk RAX200. So the bar is set pretty high for the Nighthawk considering the Netgear Orbi has won the award for fastest mesh router for the past two years in my best mesh router videos. Now, if nothing else, the Nighthawk definitely has one of the most unique designs, which basically looks like it's about to fly away with this large black wings that fold out. So the RAX200 is an AX11000 tri-band gaming router that's packed with a lot of power. And as far as ports, it's got two USB 2.0 ports and a total of six ethernet ports, which includes five gigabit ports and one multi-gig port. And all of the gigabit ports support link aggregation, including the WAN port. And when it comes to performance, the Nighthawk didn't let me down. In the stress test out of my driveway where I barely get a signal from most routers, the Nighthawk actually broke the record, giving me an average of 150 megs down on Wi-Fi 6 and a whopping 249 megs on Wi-Fi 5. All right, so second up on our list, priced around $450, is the Asus ROG Rapture GT AX11000. So Asus is known for making lots of gaming-related networking equipment, including the wireless NIC that I use for my 160 megahertz testing. So the Rapture might be pricey, but it's packed with a ton of features. It's a tri-band router that has eight external antennas, a 1.8 gigahertz quad-core processor, one gigabyte of RAM, two USB ports, six ethernet, ports including a gigabit WAN port, a multi-gig LAN port, and four gigabit LAN ports that all support link aggregation allowing you to combine them together for even more speed. Beyond that, it also comes with too many features to list, which includes a bunch of gaming related features like OFDMA, Game Boost QoS, WTFast network support, and several other features. The Asus definitely had one of the best looking apps and allowed access to nearly every feature of the router right on my phone. As far as performance goes, the Asus gave pretty impressive speeds in every testing location. 
Overall, the Asus is a great router that leaves very little room for improvement. Next up on the list, priced around $430, is the TP-Link Archer AX11000. So TP-Link is no stranger to the high-end gaming router market, and they often have great performance at a lower price. While the $430 price point might not be that low, but like the two previous routers, it has quite a few features. So the Archer AX11000 is a tri-band router with eight external antennas, 1.8 gigahertz quad-core CPU, and a total of nine ethernet ports, which is far more ports than any of the other routers in this video. This includes a multi-gig WAN port and link aggregation from two of the gigabit ports. As far as the performance goes, the Archer was great and really consistent. I had a solid connection in every location and the Archer had great Wi-Fi six speeds in my driveway, being only 20 megs away from the Netgear. Unfortunately, the Wi-Fi 5 speeds weren't quite on par with the two previous units, but the speeds were still decent. The biggest selling point for the Archer is that it's loaded with features very similar to the Asus and also has a great app with lots of gaming feature control. Overall, I did like the Archer even though I wish the Wi-Fi 5 performance was a bit better considering that's what most wireless devices rely on. All right, next up is the Linksys MR9600. So this is an AX6000 dual band router where all the others have been tri-band. Now it doesn't have some of the bells and whistles of some of the more expensive units, but it does support QoS. It still has a 1.8 gigahertz processor. And compared to the other units in this video, the MR9600 also has the most conventional and unassuming design. The back has two USB 3.0 ports and five ethernet ports. All of the ports, including the WAN port, are gigabit only, and unfortunately, they don't support link aggregation. Setting up this router was super easy using the Linksys app. After I wired it up, it only took five minutes to get it up and running. My only gripe with it is that there was no way to specifically enable 160 megahertz channels other than simply turning on DFS. After about 10 or 15 minutes of trying, I was eventually able to get my Asus 160 megahertz NIC to connect, but it did take some time. Anyways, once I did get it connected, I was able to get some pretty impressive speeds from this thing, even though I did have some issues. Now, there were times where I was sitting 10 feet away from the router and I couldn't get anything faster than 120 meg connection. If Linksys could get this router more stable, I think this could certainly be one of the best. And last but not least is the Amplify Alien. So the Amplify Alien is made by Ubiquiti, which makes great commercial and prosumer level networking equipment, including the router and switches that I use in my home. The Alien is marketed as a Wi-Fi 6 mesh gaming router. The router itself sells for $380, or you can get it with the add-on mesh unit for $700. I would definitely say that the Alien has the best design in my opinion. It has a tall cylinder shape with a small touchscreen on the front and a green light around the base. It has four ethernet ports on the back and a WAN port hidden on the bottom. The touchscreen can be used to view and change settings, run updates, run speed tests, and a few other things. Now, even though the Alien has a great app and is easy to set up, it doesn't quite have as many features as the rest of the other routers. It does have VPN, QoS settings, and allows you to prioritize gaming devices for better latency, but it doesn't support 160 megahertz Wi-Fi channels, it doesn't have multi-gig, and doesn't support link aggregation. Now, that being said, it is a fantastic mesh router and certainly the most stable and reliable, as I've personally used this router for well over a year and rarely had to ever reboot it. Now, as far as performance goes, the Alien has good speeds, but it does fall short to the others in nearly all of the tests. And since it doesn't support 160 megahertz, I wasn't able to measure that. But with those issues aside, the speeds were very stable and consistent. Overall, the Alien is a great router that looks great, is easy to use, and has a stable and reliable connection. All right, so now that we've talked about each router, let's combine all of the results and compare. So here are the charts for each test. Each chart shows the results for each router at each given location for both Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 6. So if you can't tell the Nighthawk was at the top of nearly every speed test, only barely falling short to the Asus in the 10 foot 80 megahertz test. Now, overall, I do have to say that these test results are pretty good. And as I mentioned earlier, here is the latency chart that's gonna show the latency between all these devices. Now, honestly, all of these routers gave me a really similar ping and all of them got almost the same ping no matter where I was in the house, which is really good. 
So now that we've gone over the results, let's go over the winners. So the winner for best overall category is going to be the Asus ROG Rapture GT AX11000. Now I have to admit that this was a really tough one, but the Asus not only has great speed with low latency, but it also has a ton of helpful features for gamers. Add that to the fact that it has one of the best interfaces and you've got a fantastic gaming router. And the winner for best speed goes to the Netgear Nighthawk RAX200. So the RAX200 was almost the winner for the best overall category, but considering the gaming features from the Asus, it just barely got beat out. Now with that being said, the Netgear certainly had the fastest speeds. The fact that I was able to get a 150 meg connection outside on a driveway on Wi-Fi 6 and a 249 meg connection on Wi-Fi 5 was mind blowing. And even though it doesn't quite have as many features as the Asus, it does have quite a bit of features making it a great gaming router overall. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this video. As I mentioned earlier, all of these routers can be purchased at Micro Center, and I want to thank Micro Center for sponsoring today's video. If you've never been to their store, do yourself a favor and go to their website and see if they have one in your area. Now, I know a lot of you are still waiting for the best budget mesh Wi-Fi video, and I haven't forgotten about you. I'll definitely be doing that video really soon, especially since a bunch of newer units have popped up, so be sure to make sure you look out for that video. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell and click all so you don't miss any new videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.